hitting the town for a night out. Hundreds of people pack Providence nightclubs every weekend, ready to dance, drink, and party. But 10 years ago this month, a chilling example of what can go wrong. The station nightclub fire killed 100 people in West Warwick and injured 200 others, forever changing Rhode Island. Then just this month, a frightening reminder in Brazil. More than 200 people killed when pyrotechnics sparked a fire at an overcrowded club. Inside, no sprinklers and not enough exits. I mean, we saw it very close here just 10 years ago. The, uh, the loss of uh, 100 lives. Uh, it's horrific. Because of that horror, Rhode Island law was changed after the station fire to require a full inspection of every club every year. But NBC10 discovered many Providence nightclubs and bars went years without any record of full inspections. The I-team spent months reviewing records for 60 Providence clubs and bars going back 10 years. The results? Most inspections are from 2005 or earlier, more than seven years ago. Public Safety Commissioner Stephen Perry admits club and bar inspections are years out of date. Although we go in and we sporadically inspect um, nightclubs, <clears throat> we haven't done a full um, inspection of nightclubs on a regular basis. And some of the problems found in those old inspection reports are disturbing. Records show eight nightclubs had no fire sprinklers despite a state law requiring them. But there's no record of anyone going back to follow up. Do we know if all those clubs have sprinklers today? I do not know. I don't know. We should know. Um, we will know in 2013 because we'll have full inspections on those clubs. And we're going back to the same position that West Warwick was in in 2000, 2001, 2002, and in in the years just before this fire in 2003. Attorney Mike St. Pierre represented 35 families impacted by the station fire, including nine whose loved ones were killed. The I-team showed him inspection records from Providence. St. Pierre says the documents show a disturbing pattern. When they noted violations, which is what you're supposed to do, there was no follow-up. And if they're not doing their job, they're not protecting the public. Since 2008, city records show that fire inspectors have made random visits to clubs when they're open, usually after midnight. They check to make sure the clubs aren't over capacity, and sometimes they point out code violations. But the state fire marshal tells NBC10 those nighttime visits do not replace a full daytime inspection when clubs are empty. The I-team found more problems with the one-page reports known as nightclub surveys. Some are written on old forms using letterhead from the former mayor and fire chief. And most of the 2012 reports aren't signed by anyone. No one's signing off on it. There's no substance to it. And that indicates to me that really nothing is being done. And that's a tragedy waiting to happen. Other 2012 surveys reveal potentially dangerous violations with no follow-up. At one club, clogged fire devices. At another, stairwells blocked with storage. And at a third, a fire alarm ripped open and silenced. But there's no record of inspectors returning to the clubs to make sure the problems were fixed. Those are not small violations. Well, they're not. And th th those are problematic and they're dangerous. Um, I agree. Perry says a big part of the problem is the city's outdated and haphazard record keeping system. We found inspection reports requested by NBC 10 stored in a cardboard box on the floor. Others in filing cabinet drawers with no computerized system to store or track inspections. And there's no excuse, um, but we didn't have the leadership. We didn't have the infrastructure. We're building that. The city is working on a new electronic record system, and Perry says full club inspections will happen this year. It, we should be doing it. We will be doing it in 2013. So where do business owners stand on the missing inspections, and what's the city's plan going forward? We'll have that part of the story on Thursday. Katie Davis, NBC10 News, Providence.